Hey everybody, Martin Chuck here and welcome to episode 16 of Modern Golf with Martin Chuck. And you are checking out some crazy lighting in here. Ooh, nightclub style. No, I just want you to see some shots that we're gonna hit on Foresight. This is all about scoring shots. You know, wedgery, wedge maestro. That's what we're gonna do today. But before we get started, let's go kind of look at the tour. I've got my phone up here. So I got Rory McIlroy, T1. Who's he tied with? Patrick Cantlay. Way to go, Patrick. Um, Hideki Matsuyama is, let's, oh, I got some update. I do not want some tailor-made golf balls. Thank you very much. Tony Finau is in there. Tony and my friend Boyd Summerhays, great coaching team. Uh, so really exciting. They're playing at Olympia Fields. My old buddy, Jim Furyk, was my roommate in AJGA events way back in the day. That's where he won his U.S. Open. And then also, shut to my brother from another mother, David Moreland just uh, shot one under today, finished T4 in the Colorado Senior Open. And another old friend from junior golf days, Harry Rudolph, uh, he won the tournament. Way to go, Harry. He won in a playoff. So Jim Gallagher, David Moreland, Jim Carter. So it's pretty much like a, you know, a, a pretty serious event with a bunch of great players playing in it. So a little update for you. Let's see what happens today and tomorrow at the event in Chicago. Put my phone down. And let's talk about scoring shots. So here's the thing, you know, you get really good at these shots. We call them cornerstone shots at the Tour Circuit Golf Academy. You get pretty good at a lot of things because if you can hit the basic pitch, I think producer Steve, yeah, we have it set at 50 yards. So let's see how I do here, producer Steve. Oh, and by the way, mm, look at, mm, we got the Hanma 60 degree. Um, and this thing is lovely. I'm gonna walk it up to the screen. Check out the, check out the, just the fancy work on the back of that boy. That's MC, that, cause MC. MC, um, Martin Chuck, but also when I played professionally, missed cut. Unfortunately, I missed a little too many cuts when I played professionally, but I had a lot of fun. So let's see how we do. 50 yard little shot here. 50 yarder, first go, little Hoopsville. And not too shabby. I hit it 47 yards. And we're gonna get into some of the details. 47 yards, a sliver to the right. So I've got a reasonable putt. It's going to go to some of the data here in a second. And go ahead and click, oh, a little toe-y. Pretty straight shot, path into out. Pretty straight path, I mean, 0 0.6. Let's hit another one. And we're going to talk about how you guys are going to do this stuff. So it's one thing for me to do it. Let's see if I can really get one close to the hole here. 50 yarder, feeling the pressure, ba-bump, 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 live show. Notice the stance, you guys and gals out there, pretty narrow stance looking at my target, the pin's quivering, it's nervous, it's standing there, the fiberglass knows the ball's about to ping off of it here in a second. I might have hit that one a little too far, sit! Mm. Yeah, a little too far, I carried it 60. So you got me all excited, everybody. I hit a nice straight shot that time, a little to the right, and now I've got a putt coming back at it. So, good strike, a little too much energy in that strike, centered strike, path in to out, a fraction. Um, I've got a lob wedge hit down on 8 degrees and launched 28.7 degrees. So there's a lot to understand there in some of the launch. 60 degree club, it launched 27 or 8 degrees, right producer Steve, somewhere in there. So it launched about half of the loft in my hand. Interesting, half of the loft. I've got aim sticks everywhere usually, let me grab an aim stick. So. You know, this at its designed loft, everybody, is up here at 60. Okay, about like so. But the presented loft is here about 48. Why does it land why does it launch half of the loft on the golf club? This is a really interesting thing. You guys need to know this. Okay? Few things at play. Now, if I hit enough golf balls off of a mat, you would think that my club face would stay clean, but it does not, because the skin on the golf ball transfers onto the face. You know, it was interesting, I was doing a golf school in the Midlands of England at the Forest of Arden. There's a great teaching pro there named Alistair Davies, a good buddy of mine, Al, excellent pro. Another great one there named Chris Ryan. Those dudes do some great stuff online. I would, I would encourage you to look them both up. Chris Ryan, Alistair Davies, excellent guys, great coaches. If you happen to find yourself in the middle of England, Forest of Arden, go look them up, okay? So I had a day off between some golf schools, so I elected to practice. I know, shocking, right? 
So I'm practicing and I had my lob wedge out and I'm hitting about by about the 10th golf ball. I had TrackMan on. I use Foresight now inside. I love my Foresight. And I'm noticing that my launch angle is progressively getting higher. In fact, to the point where on TrackMan it wouldn't pick it up. Good news about Foresight, it always picks it up. So sure enough, I'm thinking to myself, why is that ball launching higher? I'm on a mat, there's no moisture, but guess what? The skin of the golf ball is transferring a little bit onto the face, and that's enough to add a little bit of lubricant so that the ball doesn't grip nicely onto the face. So I'm gonna hit another shot here. I've got a 60 degree wedge. I've got 50 yards, I hit 147, I hit 161, which is not good. And let's see how I do for this shot. But let's, so I've got a clean club face. And let's talk about our spin numbers. And then we'll get into some technique because I know you all want to know how to hit this little sexy spinning wedge shot right here. Sit. Bite. Okay. Pretty good shot. I went 58. So mm, not, you know, I've got a 20 some odd footer coming back to the cup. Not a great pitch shot, but not bad. You know, I didn't blade it across the green or lay the sod over it or anything crazy like that. So when we look at that, let's see, what do we get? We got a path in doubt. There's a, there's a common theme, 10,000 yards. Click on that bottom left one. Oh, lost it. Let's do one more. I'll be a little quicker to give you some direction there, Producer Steve. Get us that bottom left uh, digits for me, if you don't mind. Let's see if I can, now I've had, this is my fourth shot. Hopefully I can hit this about 50 yards. You can see what number I need to work on when I go practice. Choosing my swing length and how I have my pivot. Energize this shot, go in. Doink. Oh, that was good. Okay, that was what I was hoping for maybe the first or second time, right? So that was almost Hoopsville, that one. So we look at that shot. I click on the bottom left bit of de details for everybody. So 8,900 RPM. Go ahead and take your mouse and kind of go over that guy, the backspin number to the right over there. You know, so 8,900 RPM. Reasonable, not great. That could have been 10,000. Launch angle, everybody, 27.9. Again, that's about half of the loft in my hands. How about the 48.9, the delivered loft? And then the angle of attack, 8.6 downward. That, uh, so let's go back to some live screens and let's talk about these, these little tidbits and how you're going to get really good at hitting these scoring shots. Because I tell you what, I've been doing, teaching golf a long time. I've been doing the golf school for 10th season now, I want to say, at, at the Raven in Phoenix. Come see me. We'll have a blast, I assure you. Now, here's the reality of this. A lot of folks come to the golf school terrified of those tweeners, those little, those little half shots. When they can't make a full swing, they are freaked out. There's some things, some feels, some forces you need to have in play in order to hit this shot. Now, some of the mechanics of this. You saw, and trust me here, the wedge wizard Jacob from Hanman made me these beautiful wedges. I absolutely love these. It's uh, T-World wedges here, fantastic. Anyway, 60 degrees aloft, built onto the golf club, presented at 48 degrees, give or take, which is a fraction of forward shaft lean. And then the ball, premium golf ball's friction getting stuck on the face is what launches the ball and actually gives you that spin, that really nice high spin number when the ball lands on the green, it will stop, okay? Modern golf balls don't spin like the ones 25 years ago. Those ones might spin off the front of the green, but modern golf balls are amazing, and that's why golfers hit at nine miles, and Dustin Johnson just shot 30 under last week. Oh, and a shout out to another relic, a guy my age, Phil Mickelson, who shot 20 what? What did he shoot? Producer Steve, it's okay. But he made, oh, he won, he, he made 20 birdies in an eagle or some crazy amount, one by nine-ish in his senior, his champions, excuse me, champions tour debut. So congratulations, Phil. I think that uh, he'll have some fun out there because he still hits bombs, Phil. M mind you, most of the champions guys are still fairly long. They really are. Phil's just actually just more amazing with his scoring shots than anything else. So onto the mechanics of this. How are you at home going to hit these shots? So notice the stance, everybody. The stance is not particularly wide. The stance is fairly narrow. Okay, so the feet are fairly narrow. In this event, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and take the golf club, relax it onto your thighs, and just kind of learn how to rotate yourself onto your lead heel. I call this rotation, relocation, and rotation onto that lead heel. So this is way trickier than I make it look. You know why I'm decent at this? Because my mentor, George Knudsen, was a real pita, P 
P-I-T-A of a coach. You figure out what PETA is an acronym for, okay? He made us do this a whole bunch. Rotate and relocate onto that lead heel. So you have to be able to do this. If you wanna, if you wanna be a good wedge player and you wanna feel like you can stand there like your feet are stuck in concrete, you're not gonna be. You gotta be able to kinda transfer the momentum of this club and you have to pace and face the speed you choose to collect the golf ball with. That's a big, big deal. So get started, we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna rotate and relocate, kinda land in that lead heel right there and feel like you can balance. And take notice, I'm not really on a flat lead foot. I'm kind of on a foot that's kind of semi-pried off the ground. You can see I'm kind of tapping the sole of my left foot there as I kind of balance myself for the moment. So that's a big part of number one. Number two, the club. If you guys watch me, you've watched this, right? You know what I'm going to say. The club does not rest on the ground. The club is in our hands. We have our volleyball arms, meaning our arms are in front of us, as though I can bump past a volleyball. Because you know at 5'9", I'm not getting up there to spike it, let's be honest. Right? So I'm going to get my arms together to bump past the volleyball, get our good hands on here, get our structured arms in place. There's my narrow little stance. The club's not resting. I can tap, tap the mat to get this radius. And then from there, let's see if I can hit another little 50 yarder with my lob wedge. That felt pretty juicy. It's a little short, a little right, but that was a nice crispy so 44 yards, so again, I got a putt that I'm probably not gonna make, but it was a crisp strike, and I actually feel really confident about these, these shots. So the spin number, close to 9,000 again. Again, the launch angle, 27.6, nine degrees downward uh, angle of attack, path 1.4. So guess what you're seeing, you guys? You're seeing consistent delivery of the golf club, and that's what I wanna help you sort out today. Let me reach over in my little goodie bag on my desk here. Be right with you. Needed to hydrate, gotta stay hydrated. This is the Tour Striker Sammy. And I know on screen it's gonna be hard to see, but there's a story behind the Sammy. It's called the Sammy because that's my daughter's name, Samantha Chuck. We, her nickname Sammy, after my Uncle Sam, so who I called Sammy. And we call this the Structural Awareness Motion Instrument. I had to pick a name, that's what I picked. So what we did was we created this funky bad drill that we use a million different ways. But basically, and I know it's hard to see, but maybe you can hear it in my mic, is it's an awareness device. And when you put it on, and you put it on your, you know, your thumb, it's looped on there, I know the lighting's tricky. But when you put it on there, I've got this string comfortably pulled out to its maximum, and I know I'm playing a little song right now for you. I'm playing the Beatles, Let It Be. But there's a little twin, little sound here going on. Producer Steve's laughing at me. I don't blame you, Producer Steve. I'm a little nuts. But there's a little push. And in that little push, I want to learn how to transport that push. And you'll notice that I'm not letting my arms separate. That's a no-no. We want to feel like we build structure in our arms with our narrow stance. Notice where the golf ball is, everybody. It's center left of my stance. I don't put it way back. I don't want to have massively down angle of attack. I already have nine degrees of angle of attack. Why is it imperative that you have some downward angle of attack? We want the club traveling a little bit down, you guys, so that we don't touch all this stuff that's called grass behind the ball. If you want to get the, the material, the, the metal on the face to grip the golf ball, you need some downward hit. I'm not trying to mash down, but my circle of my swing has some natural downward angle of attack. So here's my comfortably long arm. I'm gonna keep it comfortably long, and I'm gonna choose a speed with which to send at the golf ball, pacing and facing into the finish. Yes, and you guys can do this. Narrow stance, somewhat flary feet. Choose your speed. I've got my Sammy on to give me some awareness of structure in that lead arm. Collect the ball, pace and face. Reasonable shot, a little to the right. I gotta get my direction a little bit more organized. I can do better. Let's go ahead and knock that pin down, shall we? But while I'm doing this, I am transporting a structured lead arm. That's my structure. I'm going to transport it. I'm not going to stay down and buckle my elbows and do this kind of fancy thing that I see so many people do. But this is kind of fun, I gotta be honest. I just kind of enjoy that. Now, but for golf, I don't enjoy that. Let's see if I can do a little bit better, get my direction a bit more organized. 
That was fairly nice. Notice that launched a little higher. Interesting, right? It launched a little higher. Hmm. Let's go ahead and go to that. Uh, go click bottom left there, producer Steve. And let's see, that was interesting. And let me walk up to the screen. Ooh, look at that. Launch angle 36.7. I'm going to walk up to the face on camera, producer Steve. Let's show everybody what's happening here. Let me see if we can get that. Let me turn this light off for a second. Just so we can really kind of see what's going on here on this camera. So see this stuff right there on the middle of that face right there, everybody? That is the skin of the golf ball. Okay. You know what happens when you fall off your bicycle on the asphalt? You leave some skin on your knee on the, you don't intend to, but you leave a little bit on the road, don't you? Well, when you move a club at reasonable speed, and that club comes in contact with these golf balls, it takes a bit of skin off the ball. So guess what? I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to clean that off. Now I could go over and get my towel and do that. But oftentimes, if you guys want to really control your golf ball, please have a clean club face. You really need that club face clean. Now let me hit another shot. I guarantee you this ball launches lower because I took a moment to take away the greasy stuff, the skin from the ball that accumulated on the face. And let me hit another shot here, 50-ish. And I smoked it again. Bite, 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 bite. Okay, lots of spin, lots of stop. Perfect. A little too far. Let's look at the spin number and the launch number that goes up. Go ahead and click on bottom left for me, producer Steve. Good. So back to a, a more traditional launch, 31.9, spin got up there to 8,700. So you guys, lesson in this, you got to keep your weapon, your scoring weapon clean, okay? Now I use the Sammy on my lead arm to help give me the sensation of taking a structured, a gently pushed long lead arm and transporting that arm into a finish. So these shots are all about you know what your starting form is. Choose the speed, and I didn't do a great job of choosing my speed. Okay, I hope you can. I mean, you know what it takes to do that? Practice. I'm not, I'm not exempt from practice. I need to practice as well. You need to practice. But once you start getting good at choosing your speed with your structure, collecting your golf ball, and pacing and facing the speed I've chosen into your finishing form, get to your finishing form, you will become a pretty darn good applicator of scoring skills. So I'm moving this club. Now I'm using a 60, okay? I'm gonna move to a 54. Let's grab a 54, then we'll get into some specific drills you can use. Now for those of you that have a Sammy, thank you very much. For those of you that don't, you might consider it very helpful and a lot of ways to use this little simple training device putting, chipping, full swing, you name it. Tons of awarenesses. So now I've got a golf club that, guess what? It's got six degrees less loft on it. So I've got a 54 degree club. Let me make sure that face is really dry and free of any particular, any particular lubricant. So you can imagine if I put a little water on here, guess what would happen? The ball would lose some spin and launch a little higher because the face can't grip on the skin of the ball as much. So I've got my Sammy on, even though it's not. I've got my structured lead arm. I'm going to put my narrow stance in my radius, tap the mat right here. And now I've got a stronger face, so guess what's going to happen? Let me hit a little shot. Pretty good little shot. Cool. Let's want to see what that launch does. Go ahead and click bottom left for me, producer Steve. Little ball, little right. I've got this theme of hitting at a fraction right today. Say la vie. Not a bad shot. Let that populate, great. So notice how this launch is, it launched at 26.7, it launched lower. Spin came down a little bit. Um, the loft, 43.4, again, this is a 54 degree club, so it launched a little more than 10 degrees stronger than the prescribed loft. Let's talk about that a little, Producer Steve. So, golf is a game where we have the weight at the end of a stick, okay? We have this fancy thing called the grip, we have a shaft, some are very elaborate. This has a weight on it. Guess what, everybody? When I change direction, does this weight, this inert thing at the end, want to change direction? It does not. 
So it resists changing direction. So when I am standing over a golf ball and I am choosing in my mind a speed with which to move this thing, okay? This inert thing down here doesn't care much what I think. And guess what? It doesn't really want to change direction. So it takes my wrist conditions and it flexes them. It puts them in a state of leaning the shaft a little bit. Now it's back over there. You can't see it lean, but it's, trust me, it's leaning. And then as my body rotates to collect the ball, address and impact are mildly different. So that's why the delivered loft, as was shown earlier, is significantly less than the loft built onto the golf club because the weight of the club is in a state of catching up. So when I catch up to the golf ball, this, the face is mildly stronger. Add in a nice clean bit of metal there in a premium golf ball and you get a nice spinny, sexy wedge shot. Let me hit another one, see how I do for 50 yards. That one felt pretty good. Sit. A tick long. I'm going to fix that ball mark, don't you worry. Okay, 53 yards, so that's a makeable pot. Right, and let's take a look at the data here. Let's click on, producer Steve with his mouse getting ready to click. Let's click on uh, bottom left again. So again, what do you notice? Downward attack angle, nine degrees. That's not a ton. I mean, it would be a ton if it was a driver. I delivered 43.6 degrees aloft, which is pretty much the same I delivered. The launch is exactly the same. A lot of consistencies, people. Okay, let's go back to cameras. So everybody, how are you going to be really good at this? What have you noticed? What have you taken away from this so far? Notice how we've got some rotation and relocation in all these shots, whether it was the 60 or whether it was this 54, and I could do this with a 48 as well. We'll do that in a drill a little bit later, okay? But we've got this consistency of arms, and of course, this trail arm, you can see on the right screen, there's mild bending of the elbow. I'm not really trying to consciously do that. As I elect to create some speed, some rhythm to do this, this elbow is going to bend some. I'm not staying here and trying to manually hinge and bend my arms. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Getting my hands on here, choosing, trying to rhythmically watch my right leg on the right screen. There's a little rhythm to this. And I'm going to transport that through the ball to my intended finishing form. I always see myself in this position, enjoying the flight of a scoring wedge shot. So even when I'm over a golf ball, people, right here, guess what? My mind is going to there. My f eyes are slightly angled in my mild side bend. My weight has relocated into the heel. I'm kind of up on my trail toe a little bit because I'm pacing the weight of the club catching up that collected the golf ball. But every time I hit a shot, I always see myself going there. It's what speed, what pace am I going there? That's the big deal. Okay, so technique wise, how do people muff this? What do you do wrong? What do I see when you come see me at the golf school? This is what you do. Trust me, a lot of you do this. A lot of you will come see me at the golf school and you're awesome and I appreciate you. But you are gonna come to the golf school and you're gonna be very, very wide. Okay, this is where the horse but up and up delivering the mail. Okay, we don't wanna have a wide stance. Why? It's really hard to rotate and relocate with a wide stance. So you can stand here and maybe you can hit a good one. I could probably do it because I have pretty good educated hands. And let me see if I can get one on there. And that's pretty good. Oh, a little short. I could have maybe manually whacked it a little harder. But you know, watching that, that didn't look quite as syrupy as the old Martin Chuck rotate and relocate motion that arrives over here, right? So I don't want you to be in concrete and really wide. Mm -mm. No, no. So that's number one bugaboo right there. Number two, number two, most of you like to take the club, you know who you are, or maybe you don't, and you set it on the ground behind the ball, and then you come in here and you get all comfortable. Oh yeah, I'm comfy. Look at my hands, I'm getting my hands comfortable. And when they're comfortable, guess what you have to do? You have to grab the club and move it. Mm -mm. Good luck with that, okay? Let's assume that we can get the weight of the club in our hands and the club's off the ground. And here is me getting cozy. This is me kind of, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to nestle into my pillow at night, get all comfy cozy in my sheets before I nod off. There, this is called the waggle, everybody. This is the radius. There's the sole of the club touching just the fibers of the mat. 
Producer Steve, let's move this back to 75 yards, shall we? Let's show how, how massively different this swing is or isn't. But now we've got a different target. It's out there a little, little farther, okay? F-A-R-T-H-E-R, not F-U-R-T-H-E-R. A little farther, not further. But let's hit a little 75 yarder. So what do I need? A bit more speed, but take a look. I already know where I'm going. I'm going to my finishing form. Bite, 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 bite. Pretty good right there, okay? 73 yards. I've got this theme of hitting it a little right today. So say la vie, but man, I like that shot. If we look at this, a bit more speed, bit more path, launch angle, similar, centered hit, pretty similar stuff. Okay, this is what we're looking for, people. We're looking for these consistencies. So scoring shots, club selection, situational usage, swing basics. I've talked a lot about swing basics. I'm gonna grab my old smart ball because this little beauty, super light, inflatable, portable, put it in your bag. Now most of you know, I know what you do. You blow it up and you hang it on your golf bag. Then you throw it in your trunk and your clubs all clamor on it, right? Pop this thing, take the air out of it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy over our head. We're gonna find a home for it between our arms. And this is a product used by tons of tour players for this reason and this reason alone. Some of them use it for full swing, but I'd say most of them use it just for this. So let's hit the same little shot, 75 yarder. Choose the speed, collect the ball, go to that finishing form, rotate it, relocate it. Okay, so I've got awareness now in these arms of mine. Let's see if I choose a decent speed. Okay, how'd I do? Not too shabby. Got to fix another ball mark, 70 yards. Need to hit a little farther. Okay. Hmm. So again, you're going to see some consistencies here, people. Maybe not a perfect shot, but guess what? The path is in to out, barely, and hit down on it, launch angle, spin rate, the same type of things. Now, I know you want those consistencies, and I want you to have them. So really, if you're enjoying this show, think about what I'm doing here, you guys. Am I bending my elbows? No, because if I did that, guess what would happen to the smart ball? It would fall out of my arms. Am I super wide on my stance, my feet? I am not. Okay, feet's kind of narrow. I'm choosing a backswing speed. Now, let's talk about that. You can see behind me, I've got Ben Hogan over here, the Ben Hogan, okay? And I have a, a plaque of, I made two holes, two hole-in-ones in one weekend once. In fact, I made 10, and the last hole-in-one was that date right there, June. 21st, 2004. I am due. Okay, it's going to happen tomorrow. Playing golf tomorrow. I'm making a hole in one, going on record. I'm joking, but I'm due. I've hit some good shots. I haven't gone in, but that was the last one. Now, notice where those, those two frames are right there. You can have this visual reference of arms parallel to the ground, arms parallel to the ground. That's a pretty good one. So, if my arms are parallel to the ground on both sides, then I can kind of govern the speed the club head moves by my pivot thrust, my pivot burst, whatever you want to call it, the rotation of my body, how I rotate and relocate the speed I choose to move. So getting my good hands on the club, capturing the smart ball between my arms, because guess what? If I have, the, if I have my arms managed, guess what else I have managed? I can't have funky wrist conditions. I can't be creating a bunch of weird things that I have to try to get out in the instance of impact. Because you know you want consistency. You know why I know? Because when we meet at the golf school for breakfast and I hand you your little notebook and I say to you, write three things down for me, guess what you write first? Consistency. You know what you write second? Distance. Now, kind of going on the averages, that's most of what you write down. I don't let you write consistency because no golfer is consistent. Because the ball is going to do what the ball does based on a bunch of factors, whether there's grass in the way, moisture, elevation, atmospheric conditions, who knows what it is. But all these swings I've made, you guys and gals watching, they've been pretty consistent. Have my shots been exact? No. Some have been short, some have been right. I haven't missed one left yet, so I guess I'm consistent. I haven't missed, wait till I hit driver, I can miss that left. But let me get my good hands on here. And by managing these arms, setting up to the golf ball, finding a nice radius to this mat, choosing a speed, 75 yarder, scoring shot, not a full wedge, take a look. Just a wee one. Hitting a little shot there, bite, a little strong. Hey, look at that, I missed right again. But it went 74 yards, 
that's going to be a putt that I can probably wiggle in somehow. And again, the consistencies here, you guys. Taking a look at the bottom left numbers, I hit down seven degrees. Not trying to. I launched it half the half the loft on the club pretty much, and I had 9,000 RPMs of backspin. So that is green stopping spin right there. Okay, and it came out reasonably out the middle of the face. So again, I got to be careful not to hit too many balls with the same club because a little bit of that skin gets transferred onto the face. So every once in a while, just give it a wiper, go get a towel, wet it down, do yourself a favor, play with clean clubs. So guys and gals, what I've done is basically talked about the cornerstone of good striking. This is day one of a golf school at the Tourist Striker Golf Academy. You got to learn how to do this. You really do. And one of my favorite things, we'll line all the students up. It's kind of funny. I'll get all the coaches out and I get into my George Knudsen I, I kind of bring him out, you know, if he's up there looking down, he probably laughs every time because he would take all of us kids back in the day when junior development camp in Toronto and we would hit this shot and we would stand there and we would stand there and we, I would stand there and stand there and stand there. And guess what? I could stand here for an hour. I really can. This is like easy for me. You know why? Because I did it. Maybe not an hour, but we had these 12 kids on the line. And so maybe the first kid, George, would kind of stand there all quiet and rub his mustache and look at you and what he's looking for. He's looking for, you know, have you transported these arms when you rotate or relocate it? Is your weight in your lead side? It, you know, he would come and he would push on that club head back toward us a little bit. Could we, do we have structured arms? Not reaching arms, hollow chested, but buns under us, structured arms. And notice if you look at this scene right here, you know that the camera's in a different view. If I set up over the barber pole here and I clip the golf ball over the barber pole or off the barber pole, and I go to my finishing form, notice how my buns right there, my buns are ahead of where I started. Okay, most people trying to hit the shot, they have this idea of kind of quote staying still, staying down. Mm, no. Okay, I made an emphatic pause there for a second because I don't want you to suck. I really don't. I want you to be good at this. And most of you are taught by some well-meaning, somebody who shoots 82, okay, which is great. That's a good score for many, but they shouldn't be teaching you how to play. They should be encouraging you to play and get you in front of a good coach that will show you that address form. When I hit this shot, here's rotation and relocation. There's me in my finishing form. Buns underneath me, my heart is to the sky, it's upward. When I address one of these golf balls, guess what? My heart is to the ground. When I hit this shot, watch my finishing form. Is that what I look like for the bunch of examples I gave you? But that's what I kind of look like when I address a golf ball. So when we set up to a golf ball, we're in a forward flex. While we move our body, while we elect to have some rhythm in our feet, and that was probably a decent shot. Sure, I can get club on it, right? While we move our body in motion here, this event is, I'm using the ground to push and rotate, to relocate, to collect the ball, tuck my buns, and kind of manage my arms. That is a super big deal. I'm not trying to stay down. In fact, in golf, guess what? Plenty of down in golf. Okay, good golfers, whether they know it or not, have figured out how to take all the downs of golf and get the relationship of the club, the ball, and the mat to intersect nicely. Not crazy steep, just the nice relationship where the club has some downward attack. And nine might seem like a big number, especially if it's a five-year-old looking up to a nine-year-old, okay? But nine, really, one minute on a clock is six degrees. Two minutes on a clock is 12 degrees, so it's a fractional amount of down. It just really shows you how level the club really is traveling when it touches the ball. You need some down because you want to avoid the grass and the stuff behind the ball so you can get a crisper strike and get more spin. But you don't want to be, you know, smashing down excessively and you certainly don't want to be hitting up on the ball. So let's talk about some of these drills. Products, okay, uh, shilling my own stuff. The smart ball, something that goes between your forearms. You'll be fantastic with it. It's adjustable. You blow it up, you put it in your bag, you take the air out of it. You know, it's been, been great. For those of you that have it, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, 
There's obviously a variety of ways you can hit these shots. I've hit a pretty standard shot. I keep things simple when I play. I try to hit the same stock flighted wedge shot. I don't try to add a ton of loft. I don't try to knock them way down to hit them way lower. I keep things pretty simple. Now every once in a while, I'm gonna go to my 60 here. Every once in a while, you'll get to a situation where you have to hit a scoring shot and it has to go a little higher than the normal launch of 30 degrees. And 30 degrees, guess what? Here, I stood on this club, so I'm gonna stand on the loft so you know what 60 looks like. That's 60. Okay, 90 would be straight up and down, obviously. And then 30 is half of that. Well, sometimes we needed to launch closer to that number, almost up into the baffles at the top of them to protect the ceiling if I have a guest in who wants to pop one up into my ceiling, okay, because I don't want to do ceiling repair. Producer Steve knows what I'm talking about, right? So this is a 60. Let's talk about some scoring shots that launch the ball a little higher. So go, let's go back to our 50 yarders, producer Steve. Okay, back to scoring. And we got a 50 yarder here. And say I've got, use your imagination everybody, you can kind of see in the right screen there, there's my foresight projection. And I should, have a, I should have a golf green there with a bunker. But say I want to hit one a little bit more lofted, okay? Let's see what we get here for launch angle. And I'm gonna to try to hit this guy 50 yards with a 60 degree golf club. So it's gonna be a much bigger swing and that thing went up over the screen. Now that was quite an effective shot. And look, it even had some backup cheese on it. Ball even came back a little bit. Ooh, okay. And go ahead and let's take a look at these digits. Bottom left, let's go click on this for me here. So what do you notice about the launch angle? It launched 39, it launched way higher than the normal stock shots. Okay, well, look at that angle of attack. That angle of attack was much more shallow at 2.3 degrees. It wasn't the downward strike as much as this, the typical shot. Let's go back and hit another one of these. Let's talk about some of these setup differences, okay? So that was quite a nice shot. I'd be thrilled with that on the golf course. I'm gonna make sure I see some little white stuff from the skin of the ball on here. I'm gonna remove that so as not to reduce my ability to, to spin it. Now, what do you notice? The ball's a little bit more forward in my stance. The handle's a little bit farther back in my stance. See, to see these relationships, I'm creating more opportunity to elevate the golf ball by moving the golf ball forward and moving the handle a bit back. Now, here's what I'd say. This is a kind of an advanced skill. You know, if you're still trying to break 90, this one's a tricky one. I always say in my hierarchy of short game shots, putt when you can putt. When you can't putt chip, when you can't chip pitch, when you can't pitch flop. And this is sort of an elevated sort of flop shot by having the ball kind of forward in the stance. We've got the ball a little forward. We've got the handle a little bit back. And we're going to trust the fact that this club has something called bounce. This bottom side here, I'm going to walk up and kind of show that thing right there and get, there we go. Ooh, look at that fancy job Jacob put on this thing. That 60 has some bounce on it. And that bounce, I'm not hitting the ball first really here. I'm kind of trusting that my club is going to touch the ground fractionally behind the ball and then skid on the bounce designed into the golf club to elevate the ball up into the air. So let's hit another one of these 50. The blade's pretty square, okay? And you can see I'm using my golfer's toolbox here with my ball location line and my target line barber pole right there. And I've got the ball forward within my stance. This is going to be a higher launch. Let's launch something in the 40s here and try to hit it 50 yards. Bigger swing, higher launch. Sit, boo-boo. A little strong. Okay, it had some cheese drawing back to the hole. That was pretty cool. It flew 51 yards. And that's going to be, you know, hey, Martin, pick that up. It's good. I like that. Let's take a look at the launch angle here. It launched at 41. It had 10,000 RPMs. And look at that, I hit up on it. You know what that means, you guys? I'm gonna go on, be honest here, go live on cameras. I, Martin Chuck, just, if I was on grass, guess what I did? I just chunked that one. So here's the thing about the grass, that, I look like a hero because I was on a mat in front of a foresight, right? And foresight, this thing, I can't lay the sod over a mat. But if I was on the course, I may have chunked that. Because you can't really hit up on something Unless, you know, you know you're going to disturb some grass and you do hit up on a couple of flop shots. But 
I may have chunked that shot. It may not have been successful. So I'm just being honest with you all here, okay? So that's why that's risky because we're kind of getting a little bit too close to success and failure where the club lands relative to the ball on the ground. That's why my if I don't have to hit a fancy shot up in the air and I want to hit it 50 yards, I'm back to my pretty narrow stance. Feet are underneath my hip bones. I've got the ball center left. I've got my hands, you know, even fractionally hit of the golf ball. I'm going to rotate, re blah, 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 rotate and relocate as I choose my speed, pace and face, and hit a stock low flighted zippy one. And guess what? That's the one y'all love to see. You know why? Because it freaks you out a little bit because the ball comes out really fast and low and you're like, whoa. And then it stops and goes, puts on the brakes because that's cheesy right there. 9,000 RPMs, the 27 launch. That 27 launch right there is what freaks people out because the ball comes out. But when it hits, it goes, it's like the tire dog in front of that nice campfire. Just plops down, goes to sleep. And that's what we like when we hit our wedges. Okay. So again, when I see wedge people, you know, let's go, let's go down the line, producer Steve. Let's go down the line, okay? I want to go down the line here because I want you to see a couple of things here, and we're going to do a bit of this. How are we doing on time, producer Steve? Are we okay? We're good. Good. All right. As long as you're not nodding off out there, and I know it's kind of one-dimensional scoring wedges, but trust me, you need this. Take a look at this. This is look ma no hands, okay? 50 yarder. You're watching down the line. Narrow stance. Spinny little 50 yarder and I'll hold my finish. Okay, there we go, nice little shot. Now guess what you don't see there, people? You see armless Martin Chuck. This is what I call, look ma, no hands, right? You didn't see hands, you didn't see this, you didn't see elbows, right? You didn't see hands over here. Guess what I see at the golf school? See a lot of that. I see a lot of chicken wings, okay? Chicken wings are delicious. In fact, every time I go to my son's hockey games at the, at the Gilbert Rink here in Gilbert, Arizona, AZ Ice, the chicken wings are fantastic. Not every time, but quite a lot of times. I'll tell you what you didn't see. You didn't see a club traveling to inside out. We see tons of this at the golf school. We see people into this. I mean, you've watched me hit a bunch of shots one degree, two degrees inside out, but not seven or eight degrees inside out because the more you swing inside out, guess where you're more likely to land back and behind the golf ball. So we have to be used to this transporting this club, collecting the ball down here, collect, that's my collection sound, and then rotating and relocating, look ma, no hands. Okay, you're just looking at my buns and my back right here, okay? So let's do that again. And I want you to have the mental imagery that when you hit these shots, that person, that camera I'm pointing at right here, you wanna be able to rotate yourself and when you hit that little shot, look my no hands. Now you may have saw a little bit of my arm poke out over here, but it wasn't an elbow, that I assure you, okay? That was a juicy one. Pick that one up, Martin, it's good. Okay, so that's a big, big deal. Too many of you don't have that rotation component. Somebody taught you to keep your head down, stare down at Whitey, I get it, hello ball, and stay still. And away it goes, and you did a great job, but you're not going to play really good golf from there. So we're kind of getting our arms in front of us. Bump pass a volleyball, rotate and relocate with the chosen speed. And man, that's how you're going to play some really good shots. So um, let's see here. Producer Steve, any, any comments or questions from the audience? There are oh, tons of them. All right. So there's a great question from Bob. Bob's always, that's right. Thank you, Steve. He's like, Martin, why do I shank these shots? You know, and... So I have no problem saying the word shank. I know the word shank is like one of those unspoken things, don't say it. Well, shank, 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 shank. Doesn't scare me. Happens once a year maybe, maybe twice. I don't care. But let's talk about why you shank it, okay? Because I get a lot of people, so everybody that comes to a golf school gets what's known as a training space. So they put their, we put all their coaching, all the moments, whether it's myself or Coach Jim or Aaron or Mike or Brian, or Coach Courtney or Coach Brett, all the coaches have, they put their, whatever time they spend with you, they record it. So you have something you can reflect on, review. Oh, that's what he said, okay. Because when you leave, let's face it, you only retain whatever percent. And then when you go home, you can watch through it and you can kind of soak in more of that information. Watch it five times if you want to. 
Okay, so that's a big deal. And so a lot of the times we'll see this motion, we'll see these behaviors. We always talk about don't be afraid of shanking it. So here's a great exercise for you. Take an aim stick, okay? An aim stick, they're called, you know, driveway markers, I think, at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever hardware store. And they usually have some kind of a glittery tape at the top, so snow markers. And you can see I've got it kind of parallel to where I was hitting these shots on the ground. Now here's what I want you to realize. As I take a swing, and I'm gonna hit this stick, okay, I'm gonna show you how this transfers. Give me a, uh, just a down the line's perfect, okay? So I've got down the line, I've got my stick right there, I'm gonna miss, I'm not gonna hit that ball, I'm just gonna hit this stick. Perfect, guess what happened? That stick transferred some fiberglass right up the face of that golf club. See that line right there? Sure, I hit it a little toward the toe. Not too bad. That would have been a pretty good shot. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put that stick back. And I'm going to get really good at transferring a wee bit of that fiberglass material. I think I can do better. I think I can maybe have it a bit more centered. So notice how the stick harmlessly just pops up as the club does what? What's the club do here? So as I hit this little shot to look my no hands, Okay, oh, there we go. What do we have there? We transferred some more material a little closer to the center. What do you notice? Pretty straight, pretty straight up the face of the club, okay? So basically you're transferring, just like transferring some of the skin of the ball onto the face, I'm transferring a sliver, uh, just the tiniest little bit of that material, okay, onto the club face. So my point in this, Here's my point, gotta have a point, right? Is that a golf club doesn't ever intentionally travel too much inside out. If the ball was on this stick, there you go, there's the ball, okay? The ball is basically half the ball on the stick. This golf club down the line, you guys, is traveling back up and in a little bit, down out to the ball to clip it, collect it, okay? It doesn't continue this way, or we might invite, guess what? The neck of the club and hit the old El Hazel, the old Shankopotamus, the old lateral, that embarrassing, oh dear, that shot, we don't want that, okay? So this only half of the face ever gets on that side of the target line or the middle of the golf ball, only half of the face. So if I do this little exercise, clipping the golf ball on the aim stick, Okay, there's a nice little pitch. I didn't really try to hit it very far. But again, I transferred some stuff right onto there. And so this is a good little exercise. I'm gonna wipe those off. And this is a great one because what you wanna realize is if you are having problems shanking, okay, you've got the situation where, a great question by the way, where you have a club tra you know, traveling either too much inside out. You know, this reminds me of one of my great students, um, Yep, I'll, well, I won't say his name on, on here, but Rod, I said it, you have too much of this behavior where every once in a while that hosel goes into that target line too much and you collect it off there and the ball squibs over to the right, okay? So we have to balance that out. The circle of our swing tra travels, collects the ball, centers on the target line as it exits more to the left. And so you can see this on the right screen it doesn't, a club doesn't go straight down a target line, people. I'm sorry to, sorry to burst your bubble on that one. Okay, we don't swing down the line. Circles don't go straight. Circles might touch straight. Here's my circle, my hula hoop. That hula hoop touches straight, that's perfect. But after the bottom, guess what? It goes back up and on the inside. It doesn't go straight. So if you're trying to manufacture straight, you're taking yourself out of balance and you're really messing with the laws of geometry. And you'll have somebody to answer to. When you go on, when you pass on, you go to the geometry god and he will have issues with you when you're trying to swing straight, okay? So please understand that the swing is a circle. It has a bottom. After the bottom, the club doesn't continue straight or for heavens, doesn't go to the right. It works back up and in equally, instantly and simultaneously, amen. So Martin, another question, man, I tell you what, Martin, I tend to 
I top these shots all the time. I must be lifting up. That's a, that's, that's, this will be our last question because this one really sets me off. And I know it's early in the day, but this one may, may lead me to want to have a cocktail. Because I'll tell you what, I'm going to top a couple of these. Watch this. Now, if this was grass, it would be a little different, okay? So I'm going to top this ball. Watch my head, everybody. Did I lift my head? No. You know, I know that a mat and concrete garage floor and whatever the ball went, and it wasn't the same kind of a relationship you'd see with a club and grass, but I didn't top it. I hit down on it way too much. And so oftentimes, this kind of shot that skitters across the green, it's just, it's, it's a bladed shot. So let me explain this. So we go just face on for a second, Steve. If I take my hula hoop and I kind of create the bottom of my swing arc, okay, I can have it so far forward that I'm hitting the golf ball way too much in the belly right here and not really getting to the intersection of the mat or the grass in the some place below the equator of the golf ball. All too often, people kind of wallop the ball in the forehead, blade it along the ground, and say that they lifted up or peaked. No, you didn't. You just had a low point where the bottom of your circle, go two cameras for me there, producer Steve, the bottom of your circle was a little too forward and you hit the thing in the forehead. If we move that back a sliver to where the intersection of club, ball, and grass makes more sense, you hit lovely shots that go toward the flag and the angels sing and you get up and down for birdie or par. So that's what we want. And so you know you're not staying down. In fact, I've helped more golfers learn how to become great wedge players by actually teaching them how to stand up, which I know sounds like blasphemy, but believe it or not, too many people blade these shots because the club wants to land too far ahead of the golf ball. Sometimes I'll even take a coin and I'll put that coin behind the ball and I'll say, do me a favor, please clip the coin and the ball. You mean you want me to clip the coin and the ball? That's what I said. Yep. So get organized. Clip the old Abraham right there. Get them both, and you're going to hit some beautiful shots. So one final drill, then we will wrap it up. What time we got? Are we good? How far have we got? A couple minutes? Okay, cool. I'm going to go one final drill. For those of you that haven't seen the old plane mate, I'm going to pop this on here because I'll tell you what. People love hitting scoring shots with the plane mate, and so do I. So I'm going to put the plane mate on nice and tight, just below the belt. This buckle goes on my buckle, pull it on, there we go, and then I'm going to grab my wedge. I've got a 48 degree wedge, I've got the short band on, I'm going to clip it on here. And here's the beautiful thing about the plane mate. You know, it, it makes you kind of fight a little bit. you got to fight for the right to party, and you got to fight for the right to hit great scoring shots. So here I've got the band on here, I've got a bit of tension. Well, guess what? This is rotation and relocation at its best, people. I'm not trying to force the band straight. I've got about one pound of pressure in here, and I'm gonna learn how to keep a bit of pressure in here and rotate and relocate that pressure. Magic in this, an itty bitty a bit of force right here. Clip the ball, rotate and relocate, and gorgeous. I had too many balls for a foresight to pick it up. Sorry, Mr. Foresight, I didn't mean to do that to you. But let's get another one in play here. We have a wee bit of pressure. Let's go ahead and uh, hit this little shot, little scoring shot, maybe 20 yards in the air. Maybe 16 yards in the air, okay. Not too bad, and it rolled out a little bit. But you see the theme here, people. The theme isn't arms and elbows and, you know, it's, it's circular relationships that have a nice touch point on the ground that go to a finishing form. And if you can see this finishing form in your mind's eye, if you can see that you're going to move the weight of the club a speed to a finishing place, and hopefully by this long-winded scoring shot video, that this event is, I see myself here. How I get there is a choice on the pace with which I move myself. So if I say, okay, I see myself there. I've got say 30 yards of carry in mind. Here's my 30 yards. Okay, that wasn't bad, a little strong, well, a little too strong. Okay, but that, I'm seeing myself going somewhere. I'm not just hitting a golf ball. The golf ball is getting collected on the way to my finishing form. 
right? And sometimes when you use external devices, whether it's a SAMI, a smart ball, or a plane mate, it really helps keep you kind of in check as you're making these motions. So I want to thank you. Producer Steve wants to thank you. Thanks for tuning in to episode 16 of Modern Golf with Martin Chuck. This is just all about little scoring shots. You know, we got into basically the cornerstone of pitching, which guess what? Most people suck at hitting. And I tell you what, a lot of people say, you know, Martin, I'm not bad at that. And I'm gonna say, okay, you know, go ahead and hit a couple for me. Chunk, flub, top, oh, I don't know what's wrong today. Well, I know what's wrong today. You don't have reliable fundamental motions to perform when some super intimidating coach like myself is watching because I'm, I'm so intimidating, right? So I want you to be able to perform whenever it is. Ladies member guest, if you're a lady, right? Men's member member. Anytime that you are busy and you are playing golf with people watching, I want you to be comfortable hitting shots. I play golf with my lovely neighbor across the street. He's the best dude ever. He is terrible in front of the green, okay? 20, 30 yards, it's like one of these things. He tries to stay down and arms separate. Man, if he just learned how to kind of rotate and relocate, angels would sing. And I want them to sing for you too. So, shout out to my sponsors, Nike. Thank you for making this old dude look decent. Thank you, Nike. I want to thank Foresight, Hanma. Oh, I love my Hanma gear. Um, who else am I missing here? Oh, Evenroll. Oh, we got a giveaway coming up. Yes, we do. I'm, in fact, I'm going to post that on Instagram today. We've got another Evenroll putter we're giving away. Oh, and I'm really excited. We've got 21 days of giveaways coming up September 21st. Hanma is giving away, so I'm giving away something on behalf of Hanma every day starting September 21st for 21 days. It's going to be nuts. You are going to love it. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you for episode 17 next week. Have a great day.